Kirchhoff's rules give us an, a way of analyzing circuits when we can't reduce or use equivalents to reduce resistors. Uh, they are based on the idea of energy conservation and charge conservation, that we can't create or destroy charge anywhere in our circuit. I want to go through an example showing you how you can use them um, and, and giving you the basics of how you set up the equations involved in using Kirchhoff's rules. Just to give you a quick reminder of the steps in using and applying Kirchhoff's rules, for every branch in our circuit, we're going to assign it a current, I1 or I2 or whatever we want, and we have to decide the direction that we guess that current is in. So we're going to guess at the direction. Remember, if we end up getting that our current is negative, that just means that our guess was wrong and we need to flip the direction of our guess. From there, then we can pick a junction and all the current flowing into and out of that junction has to add up to zero. So anything entering our junction gets a positive current. Anything leaving our junction is a negative current. Now we have to be careful. We can't use uh, the junction rule for every junction in the circuit because it's not going to produce independent equations. We might find that we get for one junction, you know, I1 plus I2 minus I3 equals zero. And then for the next junction in our circuit, we get, you know, I3 minus I1 minus I2 equals zero. Well, those aren't independent equations. You can see that one is just the other times a minus sign. Uh, and so we have to be careful with using the junction rule. From there, though, we can use a loop rule. So the way to use the loop rule and the, and the basics of the loop rule is the idea that if I go around a loop in my circuit and I come back to the same point, the sum of all changes in potential have to add up to zero. So I'm going to pick a loop in my circuit and also pick a direction to follow around the loop. The direction matters. From there, then, I will write down the change in potential as I go across each element. If I cross a battery, then my potential is going to be positive or negative depending on the direction I go across the battery as I follow the loop. If I go from negative terminal to positive terminal, in other words, if I go across the battery in the direction that you would expect to be higher potential, well, then I'm going to get an increase in potential. If I went instead the opposite direction, then you would get a decrease in potential. If I'm crossing a resistor, on the other hand, resistors, as I cross them in the direction of my current, that will lose me potential. I have to go down in potential. So if I look at a resistor and I have assigned a current direction, then if I'm going around my loop in the direction of the current, that would be dropping potential and I would get a minus IR minus the current through that resistor times the resistance as my potential change. And if instead I were going through my loop and going against the direction of my current, then I would get an increase in potential as I go across that element. So the direction of my loop really matters when trying to apply the loop rule. And in general, you'll apply the loop rule more than you apply the junction rule. So with that refresher of Kirchhoff's rules in mind, now let's go through an example. I've got a circuit. I've got two batteries in this circuit. Uh, the first battery has a potential of 5 volts. The second battery in the circuit has a potential of 3 volts. So they're not the same potential in my batteries. I've also got in this circuit three resistors. Resistor 1 has is 100 ohms. Resistor 2 is 50 ohms and resistor 3 is 150 ohms. So resistor 1 is in this top branch, resistor 2 is in this bottom branch, and resistor 3, my 150 ohm resistor, is in that middle branch. Remember, I'm going to start by, for each branch in my circuit, I'm going to assign it a current. So for example, in the top branch, I'm going to assign a current and call it I1. In the bottom branch, I'm going to assign a current, I've picked a direction, and I'm going to call it I2. And then in the middle branch, I'm going to assign it a current, 
maybe call it I3 and give it a direction. And so you can see in the top branch, I've got it going in the clockwise direction. In the bottom branch, I've got I2 going in this counterclockwise direction. And in the middle branch, I've got my current flowing from uh, right to left. From there, we're going to pick a junction. And remember, all of the current flowing into our junction has to flow out again. So uh, I'm going to pick the junction on the right. You can see then that this has current one flowing into the junction, current two flowing into the junction, and current three flowing out of the junction. So I've got I1 plus I2 minus I3 equals zero. From there, now we've got one equation. If I tried using the other junction, I would just get the same equation except for a minus sign. So I don't want to use that. I've exhausted all of my junctions in this circuit. So now I have to use the junction rule. So I need to pick a loop. And this is sort of like that game where you spot how many rectangles are in the picture. Because I can see that I have three possible loops. I've got this bottom loop. I've got this top loop. And I've got the whole circuit outer edge of the circuit. So I have three choices for loops. I'm going to start with the bottom with the top loop. And so I'm going to choose a loop and a direction. And then remember direction matters. So I'm going to start at one point and I'm going to follow this pink loop as I go around. As I follow the loop, I'm going from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. And so I get a plus the voltage of the first battery, that would be plus five volts. As I come around, I the next element in my loop is R3. So my potential across it is I3, R3. And I'm moving through the loop in the direction of the current. So that's a minus I3, R3. And I continue around, the next element is R1, my re first resistor, and I'm moving through the loop in the direction of the current, so I get a minus I1, R1. And all of that, I come back to the same point I started at, has to equal zero. That's my top loop, the bottom loop. I'm going to actually choose the same direction, so I'm going to start here and go around in my loop. And if I do that, now I'm going in this direction, this uh clockwise direction, I'm going across my battery from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. terminal. So I my potential change is 5 volt, volts, but it's a negative 5 volts because I'm going from positive to negative. I'm going opposite the direction that would be an increase in potential normally in a battery. From there, I am crossing my R3 against the direction of the current I3. So the potential drop is I3 R3, just using uh, Ohm's law. But since I'm going against the current, I get a, an increase in potential. And then I come around and the next element is R2. But again, as I go around my loop, I'm going against the direction of the current. And so it's a plus I2 R2. And all of that, when I get back to the same point, has to equal zero. So there's my three equations. I have three equations now with three unknowns. Now, one thing you want to be careful of is we want to make sure that each of our equations is independent. A useful check is just to make sure that each unknown is used in at least one equation. But another check that we should uh, we should make is Make sure that no, none of your equations is simply the other equation times a minus sign. Uh, but as long as all of our, we call this, by the way, that these equations are linearly independent. And if you have taken or studied linear algebra, dependent. And if you've studied linear algebra, you might know what that means. If you don't, then really that's everything that I've said is, is, is what it means. It really means that the, no other equation in your set is simply the negative of, the, uh, of any other equation. From there, once we've got as many equations as we have unknowns, in this system I've got my three currents as my unknowns. I've got three equations. 
And so now math tells me I, as long as I have linearly independent equations, I should be able to solve this. From here, you pick, oops, pick the uh, the solution method uh, that you like. Uh, you can use substitution. Uh, one that kind of is kind of slick is adding and subtracting equations, multiplying equations by a certain factor, and then adding them up. Or if you know how, you can use linear algebra and uh, the tools of linear algebra to solve this system of equations. Whichever one you want to use, go ahead and use it, and you'll find that, curiously, the current through this top branch, this top loop, is uh, 0.02 amps, and the current through resistor 3 is 0.02 amps. So in this top loop, I'm going to have a current going in the direction I supposed, and the current in this loop is going to be 0 0.02 amps. But in the bottom loop, in this branch, my battery is actually going to supply a counter uh, potential so that no current flows in this branch which is curious. Uh, so we can actually generate a back EMF across this branch such that the potential in this branch doesn't cause current to flow. There is no change as I go through this branch from this point to this point. So I don't get any current flowing in this, um, in this branch. It's kind of weird. Hopefully this gives you an idea of how to apply Kirchhoff's rules when analyzing circuits. It's really a matter of just following the steps to get your equations and then from your equations uh, using whatever method you want to solve a system of equations. If you have any questions, uh, you can come see me.